But when Congress authorized the park, it authorized the park because of the thermal activity uh, that was there, uh, the hot springs and geysers and such. And so that's what's brought most people uh, to Yellowstone. It's not so much the wildlife or the other terrain features, it's the thermals. There are several different kinds of thermals. First there are hot springs. Now these hot springs usually have colors in them. And these colors you usually come from suspended mineral particles that are precipitated out or large communities of microscopic organisms of one kind or another, bacteria or some such thing. The water here is very hot. It's often boiling. Now, boiling at sea level means 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But at this elevation, it might actually be less than 200 degrees. These are some of the examples of um, colors that you can find in hot springs because of the algae, bacteria, minerals, and, and other things. Now a fumarole is different. A fumarole is basically water vapor and other gases being expelled from holes in the ground. It's a kind of a steam vent, or sometimes called a dry geyser. That's a fumarole. Often this is so forceful that the ground can tremble and produce strong roaring noises like thunder. of Yellowstone is covered with fumaroles. Mud pots, on the other hand, are acidic hot springs with a limited water supply. Some microorganisms use hydrogen sulfide, which arises from deep within the earth, as an energy source, and they help to convert the smelly gas to sulfuric acid, which breaks down the rock into clay. Uh, various gases escape through the wet clay mud and cause it to bubble. The, uh, the mud pot activity varies a little bit with the seasons and the amount of precipitation. This is the uh, white domed geyser. It goes off every uh, 12 to 24 minutes and it's uh, about due to go off again. Now geysers are another type of hot spring. This time there's some kind of constriction however in its plumbing. A geyser periodically erupts violently as pressure mounts in a large volume of hot water stored to deep relief beneath the surface. Now, some geysers erupt every minute while others are inactive for months or years or even decades. Uh, the park has more than 300 geysers and each continues to change its pattern of activity. This geyser is located uh, just a few miles north of Old Faithful. Geysers tend not to be uh, terribly uh, faithful. Uh, they vary a great deal as to when they're going to go off. Most geysers are not like this one and Old Faithful will go off on any kind of a regular schedule. Sometimes they will erupt 
many times a year uh, and other times that they will not erupt for, for decades. And when they do erupt, you can't really tell how long the eruption is going to be in most cases. It could be just a few seconds or it could be many hours, perhaps even days while the eruption is going on. Next we see a map of uh, Yellowstone National Park. In the uh, upper uh, left hand corner that's where Mammoth Hot Springs are located and of course that's the most famous hot springs in the park. Colors in the water can tell you a little bit about the content. Blue water would be a reflection of the color of the sky but to the extent that uh, the water is green it may be affected by sulfur, uh, yellow added to the blue, or there could be a certain amount of algae in the water. If there is a white precipitate, uh, that's usually an indication of some kind of mineral. In addition, other colors can be caused by various kinds of bacteria and algae. Mammoth Hot Springs was the area of the park that was uh, first developed. As a matter of fact, it was uh, first developed even before it was a national park. It was developed as a hot water bathing area, uh, sort of a resort for the local miners and such. But with the coming of the park, uh, the park officials began to focus their headquarters efforts at the Mammoth Hot Springs. The reason is because it was uh, near the railhead of Gardner, uh, uh, Montana, and in addition to being near the railhead, this was also the part of the park that was the warmest because although it's in the north, it was at the lowest elevation. Uh, the temperatures uh, further inside the park can easily be as much as 15 degrees or more colder, and in this particular climate, warm is important. Because this was the first national park in the world, really, uh, no one had any idea of how to administer it. Uh, in the beginning, there was a great deal of trouble with uh, poaching and damage to the monuments. And there weren't very many people there to protect it. As a matter of fact, there wasn't really anyone there until the US Cavalry came in with uh, a few hundred troops. Initially, the U.S. Cavalry came in with only 50, but over a period of years, they established a permanent fort and brought their numbers up to about 350. And eventually, they did uh, manage to suppress uh, the poaching and they managed to correct the uh, damage done to, uh, or the rate of the damage done to the, to the monuments, at least to some extent. Uh, in addition, uh, they discovered that uh, they needed to have a law and order out there in order to help their police function and uh, they arranged for a, a judge to be sent out uh, to the park uh, to stay there permanently with him and adjudicate cases. Eventually the U.S. Cavalry presence at, uh, at Yellowstone National Park was replaced by the park rangers. As a matter of fact, the first park rangers were U.S. Cavalry troopers that volunteered for the conversion. <laughs> 